Hey, hey, Marcus Houseweed here, here, and welcome to this episode where I've built this ridiculously massive rocket. It's got a huge amount of Delta V on it, and we're going to use this thing to play around with putting a vessel into a retrograde orbit around Kerbal. I don't remember having ever seen anyone do such a thing. I could be wrong, though. But you can see here we've got a total delta V of over 20,000 in a vacuum, a little bit less if we include the actual takeoff in the atmosphere. This monster starts off weighing 7,395 tonnes, so it's not small by any measure, and it has a starting thrust to weight of 1.48. From a presentational point of view, I just couldn't go past using camera tools just to take a few shots of this in action. What you'll see here coming up is the first stage disconnecting, which is just the outer ring of the engines here. And there they go there. Now the reason that stage 1 emptied out first is simply because there was one less fuel tank attached to stage 1. What that meant, of course, is that stage 1 had a huge amount of extra thrust to weight available to it to actually help lift this thing off out of the atmosphere. After main engine cutoff, we power down and we decouple this thing, messing up our atmosphere here totally, leaving a huge amount of debris to come pelting down into the ocean. So let's play with this thing now, let's see if we can get this thing into orbit. We have Burberry Kerman, of course, as always, our dummy test pilot. Dummy, of course, because of his intelligence level, and secondly, of course, is because he's already become our crash test dummy for some of the crazy vessels we've been putting together in the last few episodes. So, keeping with this tradition, Burberry is our go-to Kerbal for any risky vessel operation. Again, you can see those wonderful cloud effects from the stock visual enhancements mods. Another new mod I've been playing with, obviously, as I mentioned, was Camera Tools. That is a great one if you just want to get some great video shots of your vessels. Another mod that I had to use here was Hangar Extended, just so that I could build this thing out the top of the vehicle assembly building like you saw there earlier. Just ditching stage one here. Here it goes. Of course, all of this information is in the description. You can check there for the list of mods I'm using. You can check there for the craft file if you want to have a play. Now, the second stage can run for quite a bit longer simply because it has that extra S3-14400 Kerbidine fuel tank. Hmm. Seeing as that I'm not watching the nav ball here, I think I might be just flying just a little low at this speed. We're getting a little bit of heat here. Should be okay, it looks like we're getting out of the atmosphere largely now. What we'll do is decouple this second stage. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. I hope, Burberry, you have said goodbye to your family because this doesn't look good. I wonder if I can get a stage out of here to rescue Burberry. That stage isn't working either, we'll ditch the next stage. Come on, can we get this thing out? And yes, it seems that we can. So, after recovering this vessel, we'll begin this again. Burberry loaded up into a fresh new rocket. Just luckily we had one of these extra monsters sitting around in another vehicle assembly building elsewhere around Kerbin. So what had actually happened in that last launch attempt was that there was a few parts that were actually just sitting over the top of a few other parts between the second and third stages. So what I've done is used the move tool just to space things out just a little more. And I've also used auto strut in a few situations just to tie this thing together to make it all a little more solid. It's a little bit of a pity actually that the stock game doesn't have any larger fuel tanks than these Kerbidine ones. Um, e even engines as well, like you can't actually mount the Mammoth engines to anything underneath. You can't add a decoupler underneath a Mammoth engine. That can feel quite restrictive when it comes to actually building some monster like this. Now I've launched a little higher this time before doing a more aggressive gravity turn just because I wanted to get out of the atmosphere and stop any of that playing around with the vessel as it decouples between stage 2 and stage 3. And hiding the instrument panel, that is much better. Much better Burberry, I guess. Is wiping the sweat off his face. Our stage three is powered by 19 
separate Rhino liquid fuel engines. These things have got a higher ISP than the Mammoth liquid fuel engines. And this of course means that we can get a higher amount of Delta V out of the same amount of liquid fuel. In fact, as far as the larger engines go, this is the most efficient engine, perhaps with the exception of the Poodle engine, which is obviously a much, much smaller engine. So if you want an engine with quite a lot of power and you want to get the best efficiency possible, this Rhino engine is the best. Well, you know, unless you want to attach a crap load of atomic rocket motors on there. This third stage alone has got just over 3000 Delta V available to it and we're going to use this to push straight past orbital velocity and straight out of Kerbin's sphere of influence. Now obviously we have timed this launch so that when we actually eject out of Kerbin's sphere of influence we are going to be ejecting in such a way that is going to be pointing in a retrograde direction from the direction that Kerbin is actually orbiting. So we want to keep wiping off that velocity as we go so that we can essentially reverse our orbit entirely around Kerbal. Now this is no small task because Kerbin actually orbits around Kerbal at over 9,200 meters per second. So not only do we need to wipe that 9,200 meters per second off, we also need to reverse it. So we need to add on another 9,200 meters per second. <laughs> oh, and bugger me, I forgot to get rid of the fairings. Uh, yep, probably should have ditched these earlier. So as our fourth stage runs out, that stage having seven of those Rhino engines, we are going to be left with the single Rhino engine stage. As we say goodbye to stage four, which gave us over 4,500 meters per second in Delta V, we are now burning stage five, which is going to give us another three and a half thousand meters per second in Delta V. This of course is going to zero out all of our orbital velocity around Kerbal and even put us into a retrograde orbit at this point. Decoupling that spent stage there, we are now burning the Poodle engine on our sixth stage. This stage is going to give us just shy of 2,800 meters per second in Delta V. This is quite a good engine to use if you're using the Rocker Max fuel tanks, which we are here. It gives you pretty high efficiency, 350 in its ISP, which is just a little more than the Rhino engines. Of course, again, you could also use Nerve rocket motors to make this even more efficient. Speaking of atomic rocket motors, that's what we're going to use right now. We are just shy of 14,000 meters per second in our orbital velocity compared to Kerbin. In fact, our entire burn here is going to be done within Kerbin's sphere of influence. So by the time we actually exit the sphere of influence here, we are going to be traveling at double the orbital velocity of Kerbin, but in the opposite direction. The two side tanks are emptying out here, so we're going to ditch those, and that's going to shed just a little more weight to make this last stage just that little more efficient. This is going to give us enough Delta V to get us all the way up to create an intersect with Kerbin on the opposite side of Kerbal. Now luckily for me I had just a little extra Delta V in this last nerve rocket motor stage so I needed to do just a slight adjustment here, um, just a radial adjustment so that we could uh, just fix our orbit up a little. We wasn't quite intersecting and just a prograde burn just to boost our orbit up a little more and there we go we've got an intersect there a very very fast intercept what we'll do is we'll just zoom in here to Kerbin and we'll just adjust this a little so that we're going to be basically hitting dead center on the planet we'll see how that goes Switching into the highest time warp possible, you should see we're going to meet back up with Kerbin in a very, very short time compared to what we normally would. You can see now that we've left the sphere of influence, our orbital velocity is now 9,200 meters per second, so obviously this is in a retrograde direction around Kerbal. Just past that asteroid very quickly. And as we approach Kerbin, we're going to reduce that time warp. Zooming in there, we're going to keep bringing that time warp down as we get closer. We want to just basically come in and stop our time warp just as we enter Kerbin's sphere of influence. There we go there. 
So we'll just do a quick radial adjustment to make sure that we're coming in in the sunlight. We want to come in so that you can see what's going on. Now again, remember we're coming in here at over 18,000 meters per second. So we need to make sure that we're not going to skip in and out of the atmosphere. Otherwise, we'll never be able to return. We want to basically bring our periapsis here right down, basically so it's touching on Kerbin's surface. Now what's going to be particularly interesting about this is the amount of g-force that is going to be experienced by Paul Burberry Kerman, our test pilot. You can see I've added the g-force meter up into the top right hand side of the screen there so check that out as we do these experiments. So I think we've got everything here, we've got our heat shield set, we've got a parachute here. It's only a small vessel so we should be good. So here we go, time warping in. <laughs> Actually, I'm getting just a little apprehensive, probably not as much as Burberry. Even at just a modest time warp here, Kerbin is just hammering towards us. What the hell? What the hell? I didn't even get a temperature reading. I, I didn't even get a warning of any kind. It was just immediately dead. So after trying this a few times, I realized that there was absolutely no way to even touch the atmosphere. Uh, traveling at that velocity. So we're opening the cheat menu. Um, avert your eyes. We're hitting the ignore max temperature option under the cheats menu here to see what happens when we do actually enter at this velocity. I must say I'm really disappointed that it didn't at least burn the ablator off before just exploding like that. So as we re-enter here this time, you can see the G meter has just gone ballistic. Burberry Kerman has gone unconscious. And look at that G-force meter, it has gone ballistic at 176 Gs has been our maximum there. Uh, that's, that's, that's pretty high. <laughs> I would say Burberry would, in reality, uh, really just be a liquid pile on the bottom of the, uh, of the capsule there. So we just have to wait here and see how long it's gonna take for Burberry to wake back up again. Come on Burberry, there we go. <laughs> Now the Kerbal G limits are basically a new feature of version 1.2 which obviously hasn't been out that long so a lot of people aren't actually aware that you can select this option in your settings. Basically what it means is your Kerbals will go unconscious if you hit a certain G-force and the higher the G-force the longer they do take to wake back up which is why Burberry was out there for such a long time. Now in that run obviously we basically tried to skim through the atmosphere as much as we could before descending down here to land. We've got the parachute out now of course coming down for a nice soft landing. Much softer than what Burberry has just gone through. Coming down and splash down there. So we'll recover the vessel there. Interestingly, I have also tried using the largest heat shield, which is obviously the inflatable heat shield, um, and obviously not having that ignore max temperature cheat setting on, and that also immediately exploded. So there was no way that I could re-enter with any heat shield at that, at that velocity. So um, what we will try, though, is to see if we can... Um, max out our G limit as much as possible. So we've grabbed the uh, the inflatable heat shield here. We are again approaching with a velocity in excess of 18,000 meters per second, so around the same speed. <laughs> and look at that G force over 1,000 Gs. <laughs> And of course, because we only have a small little capsule in here, the heat shield is just unstable as all hell in this atmosphere. Uh, that's no good at all, really. That time, of course, we were hitting Kerbin pretty much dead center, so we were hitting the maximum amount of atmosphere in the shortest amount of time possible. In combination with this, we also used the biggest, most ridiculous heat shield, so the G-forces were just ballistic. Now, there, there, there actually doesn't appear to be any way for me to get Burberry out of this. I can't even jettison this thing, I don't think. Let me see if I can click on it and manually jettison it. Um, and, oh, come on. Uh, okay, so the heat shield spinning around exploded our capsule. <laughs> it matters not, though, Burberry is immortal. He can be brought back to life with a quick press of a key, so... There will be no goodbyes, there will be no funerals. Burberry will be back. 
thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. You guys are freaking awesome. I am almost up to 10,000 subscribers now. So uh, a big thank you to everyone. All the likes, all of the support, all the comments, everything helps a massive amount. Thank you for allowing me to do this. Um, it's been a wonderful ride doing these videos. Um, thanks very much, of course, to all of you that have subscribed. And for those that haven't yet, please do subscribe to see more. Follow me on Twitter at Marcus House Game, and we'll see you in the next video. And launching our final mission here. Okay, Jebediah, hopefully we've got the Delta V needed to get to the moon here. We're at around nine minutes here now. Again, we are physics warping as much as possible to try to speed up this launch process, and you can just see how wonderful these auto struts are working. 